support of Hitler. No, most likely. definitely not. British National Party. Did you know? Party did you know Hitler was a Jew? All right. So then you must. So you do it. So you didn't like him. So you're an anti-Semite then. How is that? Because I'm just asking you a question. Hello. See, this is where no. racism is perceived. No, no. You see how I asked you a question, yes. and straight away you tried to call me a Nazi because I asked you a question. No, I didn't. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. You, you what did, I said did, was, did, let me speak. Everyone's seen it. Everyone's Jim, seen it. let me say. Speak about the Tanakh. Yeah. Right. I will speak is in one inspired? second. Is one it second. Inspired? Hello. Is it I want no, no, no. God? Is Jim, it the word of God? One second. Is the Tanakh the word of God? One second, Jim. I, you said Hitler was a Jew, right. and you said you didn't like him. So I'm uh, no, 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 no. So I'm saying you're not because right. you don't like the Jew. Not because you said he was a Jew. I'm saying because you didn't like that he's a Jew. What? So I don't like one Jew, and that makes me an anti-Semite. Yes. Is you, that how it works? You're a special case. Is that how it works? Is that how it works? Yes, okay. because with you. Right. So let's it, do it. Let's have a real conversation. Yes, no problem. Right. The Tanakh. Is yeah. it the Word of God? The Word of God? No. Uh, go on. Explain to me what it is. What is it? It's the Talmud. The, the Talmud? Tanakh. Oh, the Tanakh you're talking about. Sorry, I made a mistake. My apologies. <laughs> the sun. I'm English. We're not used to the sun. I, 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 I failed to see how Tanakh sounds like Zoha or however you say Zohar. it. How do you say it? Zoha? How do you say the Zoha? Zoha. Zoha. Right. Yeah. So, so the, we're talking about Tanakh. We're talking about the Bible. Bible, the Old Testament. Old Testament. Is it inspired by God? Yes. Is it inspired? Yes. Is it? Is it come from God? In what sense come from God? Has the has the prophet received the message from the Father himself and then written it down? Father? Well, the God, as you called him. No, but the God. Did it come down whole? You're asking? No, 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 no. Each individual, each individual book, yeah. right? No, but you each prophet. Yeah. Do they each have divine connection with the Lord? What does divine connection mean? Oh. No, because I'll explain you why I'm right. asking. No, no, let me, oh, let me I'm going to get to the you crux. Ask me a question. I'm going to get to the crux. It's too hard asking you a question. I'm going to get to the crux Please, of the issue. That's much quicker. When I first asked you about the Bible, yeah. you wanted, you instinctively went to the Talmud. Yeah. Now I'm asking this question in all sincerity. No problem. Right? If we've got the Bible. Yeah, the Old Testament. Just to be clever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because people sometimes. Yeah, I know. The I Old know. Testament. Yeah, so yeah, let's yeah, just yeah, say yeah, the Old Testament. The first five books. Right? Yeah. What is the Talmud if it's not man's separate instigation and involvement in something that is holy and something that is divine and it's not man's just intervention on that? What is the Talmud if it is not just a man getting involved with God's work? So, I'm trying First of all, explain to people what the Talmud is. Talmud is a set of books around, uh, I think 30-ish, I could be wrong, give a quote. 30 of this, they were written in Babylon by the leading scholars at the time. They are commentary on the Mishnah. Right. So what does that mean? The commentary on the Mishnah, which the Mishnah is a commentary on the Old Testament. So it's a it's actually, no, no, it's not a commentary. I would be wrong. Sorry, I apologize. It is a commentary on Jewish law. On Jewish law. Yes. So where does the law come from? Where's the law derived from? God. God. Yes. Moses. Part of it came, it came through Moses. It I, came through Moses. Where are these extra parts coming from? Which extra parts? Well, I, you said part of it come through Moses. I'm asking you where the extra stuff's come from. No, what extra? That's what well, I'm you said part of it, so I'm asking no, what else part, is no, there? No, partially God gave directly on Mount Sinai. That's why. Right, right. So Moses. No, no, part the, we believe that the first of the of the Ten Commandments, God said to Noah. Was, what? To Noah. No, no, the first of the Ten Commandments, we believe God actually gave it directly. Right. Not through on Mount Sinai. Yeah. Right. We believe the first, and I think maybe the second one as well. And don't quote me on it because I'm not sure. So I'm not going to make it. We believe, and then the rest of them, Mo God gave to Moses, and Moses gave to the people. Because we believe that when God gave the first, uh, the first one, first, um, uh, first of the uh, first of the ten um, commandments, that the voice of God, whatever that means, because we don't believe it means to fit the actuality of God, but we believe the voice of God, so to speak, killed everyone instantly from hearing the omnipotence of God. It killed them. Right. And we believe that they, God revived. Gave, gave them back their souls, resurrected all of them, and then I think the second one as well. And after the second one, the, the people, the Jewish people said they can't keep dying like that. So then God gave it to Moses for the remainder of the eight. Right. So why, that's, why did you bring that up? Right. So, what's the Talmud then? The Talmud is a, you said it is a 
It used to be oratorical, didn't it? It used to be spoken rather than written. Is that right? Talmud was never spoken. It was never spoken. It was always written. Oh, right. that's interesting. Right. So what, what makes is, you? No, so what, what makes what, you? What, what no, no, I have a question. Go on. What makes you think that it was um, oral tradition? Yeah. I read it somewhere. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it used to get spoken, and it and then it, it, it all started getting messed up when people started writing stuff down. You don't know the famous saying from Winston Churchill: "Don't believe everything you read online." Oh well. This is why I ask people. No problem. So back to the Talmud and what it actually is. Yes. So we've got a divine, a divine holy book. Books. Books. Sure. I beg your pardon, because it is. Right. We've got divine holy books. The Old Testament. Right. So what is the Talmud? If because like I said, when I spoke to you about the Bible, the first five testimony. Yeah. yeah? First five books. Right. Of the Bible, yeah. You straight away instinctively wanted to speak about Talmud. It was a mistake. Okay, cool. I accept. It's a, it's you don't. A, right? You don't accept, which is fine. Right. I don't lie to you. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. You no, don't I am. I'm making an effort to accept. But you don't. Though. But I'm trying to. No problem. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> what is the Talmud then? Try and explain it to me. You said it was. Talmud is a commentary. A commentary. Or explanation. I'm not sure which one's the right word. Because the Talmud is. Um, I'm not sure. Wait, give me a second. The right word to articulate. Correctly. No, I'll do the, same. the Talmud isn't a straightforward um, commentary on the Mishnah and explanation because sometimes it diverts from it. So, for example, it could be originally talking about if a cow was kosher, if I can say, and end up with a house forbidden. It sometimes diverts itself. So, I'm not sure what the right word to describe it would be. It's, it's, it's. I, cool. I could, I could, I could give you a word. Let's hear. I'll tell you. Subversion. No, I don't. You don't so. believe so? No. So you, can can I try and explain to you why? Why you believe? Yeah? Please, yes, please. Right. So the the whole idea behind the subversion will go like this. Yeah. The argument goes that you've got a holy, divine, inspired, right, right book, book, books. five books. We believe it's more than five. Right. Okay. You've got the books that are divine and they're from the Lord. Yes. So. When the rabbis all get together and they say, oh, well, this means this and well, this means this, and they'll have a little vote and they'll argue it out for however long it takes. I'm saying that's not from the Lord, that's man getting involved. Yeah, because I was arguing some guy came before the jab. And he keeps actually taking the jab. And I said to him, why would I take the jab? People. It's one person. <laughs> person, you're right, not people. Yeah, but right, so, I was trying to explain to you why the Talmud is a subversion of the Holy Word of God. Yes, I hear it. Do you hear it? I do. I don't agree, but I hear what you say. I understand why. Can you tell me why I'm wrong? It's a good question, that. It's actually a very good question. So, I'm not sure. trying to think of the best way to explain this. Take your time, no pressure. So, the reasons it's not a, a sub, uh, uh, subversion of it because it's required to bring evidence of subversion. No, of what it, of what it's saying. It's required to be backed up. So, if inherently, unless you believe, then I can't argue with you. That you believe the the entire rabbinical. So the entire Jewish people were part of the conspiracy to subvert it, unless you believe that. Bubbles. I'm not sure. No, I'm. I'm arguing there is an elite class of rabbis. Yeah. Like in today, for instance, today's society, we have an elite class, yeah. and they reign over all others. And they sort of, they sort of have it in a way that what they says goes. And fuck the plebs, it doesn't matter. But that's not how it was written because you see many times there's arguments between the rabbis. Mm. And you just know to the extent there was even one of them who was uh, excommunicated on the rabbis. It was even excommunicated. You see, well, for arguing about the Talmud? What? For arguing what specifically? Because he held a view that the majority did not. And he wasn't, and they, they said that this. Well, the argument, you're allowed to make the argument, but it reaches the stage when it comes to making the, the decision. There's a, you need backup for it, you need proof. And the, a singular is not good enough. Right. And he wouldn't accept, he 
he's continued that holding his view. Right. So it requires in there. You well, I hear the argument of an elite. So you say, so you're saying that he got excommunicated because he held a political, he held a certain view. He wouldn't change it. Yes. He wouldn't change his view. He, he would act upon his view. He would act upon it. And what actions might he, what might he take up by having this perception? I don't know what the example was there, but regardless of what the action is, is that if you're a leader of a community, and there's a decision made, collective responsibility exists, so to speak. Right. When it comes to religious law. Right. Decision is made. What? So, and also, you're, you're saying some elite class. Mm -hmm. My question is, how was that possible as there was, they weren't situated in one location. To the extent there was even a town was written in Jerusalem. Right. So there wasn't there was multiple elites. I wouldn't use the word elite, but there was multiple groups of rabbis. How could it be one attempt at subversion? Well, I wouldn't argue that it's one. I, I would argue that it's observable. Like you can see that what the the Bible says, and then you can see... What are the contradictions? Yes. So what are they, you? What are the contradictions? Thou shalt not kill. Yeah. For instance. Yeah. Just to bring back what Georgie was saying with his little bit of paper, just off the head. Thou yeah. shalt not kill. Yeah. So then, so then, so then, so then, so then to argue... Yeah. That in certain instances yeah. you can kill yeah. goes against the command of God. Doesn't. Doesn't? No. Well, this is very important, David. You've got to make a coherent argument now because the Bible says very clearly yeah. do not kill. So when the rabbi says you can't kill, no, 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 let me ask you, the on. Bible also says if somebody comes to kill you, you should kill them first. What? The Bible also says if somebody comes to kill you, you should kill them first. Right. Kill them first? Yes. If somebody comes to come, tries to kill you, you should kill them first. Right. Yes, we believe that shall not kill. But no, it's not, it's not an absolute. And I'll explain you why, using the Bible itself. So what does the Talmud actually say about killing it? You shouldn't. I didn't realize there was much of a debate. They're generally against killing. It might come and surprise you. Well, no, but he just showed, he, he's got something printed down. He's got something printed off. There's, there's speed, he's referencing in the instance, in a certain instance that you, you may when be your permitted. Life what? When you, yeah, but I'm asking, is there more than just, is that the only caveat? Is that the only, is that the only instance you're allowed to kill? To defend yourself. Okay. I think um, in war you're allowed to. In war? I think that's about it. That's it, yeah, just them two things. And to save yourself. But that's if you want, that's the same sort of thing as you said the first time, wouldn't it? I think so, unless, unless you have an example. I'm, I'm no, to, I'm asking. No, no, I think so. This is good faith, this is how this no, no, works. I'm saying, I think so, I could be, if you right. have an example, I'm willing to address it. No, no, that's, that's, that's lovely. That's basically all I wanted to know, David, mate, is that I wanted to know if you thought that the Talmud was actually a subversion of the Word of God. I do not. You do not? Well, in that case, we can agree to disagree, my friend.